Episode 49, Filial Affection. I hope this is what I think it is, like a Hohenheim Brothers episode. That'd be great. Al, can you hear me? Come on, wake up. He's been out for a long time. Tell me something, Edward. Do you think your father would step forward to save you if I chopped off one of your limbs? I bet he would. <laughs> so cool. And so sinister. This still blows my mind. I never get over it. A lot of tree eating recently. It's you. Give the prince's body back. Now why would I want to do something like that? They're doing great. They're getting along real well. More trees. <laughs> There's gonna be no forest. Oh, she has some pain. Ed was right, but it hasn't been long enough. <laughs> nice. I didn't ask for Clutch your help, save. So oh, come on. Yeah, Carol please. Obviously hasn't healed yet. I can take care of myself. And then prove it to me and start acting like you can. We're gonna need your help tomorrow. <laughs> it's already thinking ahead. <laughs> Get him out of here! Sorry, I couldn't kill the little bastard. You did great. You did better than anybody ever expected you to do. Can't exactly fault you for that one. Yeah. Even I consider him to be a monster. Oh, is this gonna be Al? Wake up. Al comes. There he is, he's back. It was like he was manipulating my soul. I feel violated. The homunculi are basically your relatives. They're like second generation clones of me. That's true. I might be able to interfere with your seal since we share the same blood. Yeah, that's weird. They're related to father. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Since the beginning of the show, or since father was introduced, I've always thought that the name of the character was really interesting, calling him father. And I haven't been able to put my finger on why all this time, but there are a couple of interesting things for me. One is that Hohenheim considers himself a bad father and is not really engaged in the lives of his children, yet his children are great. Father is very involved with the lives of his homunculi children, and they love him, but he's a terrible person. <laughs> also, there might be something about lineage, right? Because the show is big on, like, consequences, and what you do passes on, and these two characters give that a very direct paternal quality. The homunculi are obviously father, but also Ed, even though he would probably not like to admit it, is very much like Hohenheim. That shadow monster devoured the fat homunculus whole, and he's overpowering us. Breed and Edward are doing everything they can, but I don't know how long they can last. Yeah, they could use some backup. This is all my fault. No, Al. <laughs> None of this would have happened if I hadn't let Pride catch me. No, Al. It's not your fault, of course. Hey, Dad. You're a pretty brilliant alchemist, right? Mm hmm. I guess. I know a thing or two. <laughs> so humble. I've got an idea but I'm gonna need your help to pull it off. Father and son working together. Now then, I can see you more clearly without those trees in the way. A lot of tree casualties. Damn it. Are you still breathing over there? Does wheezing count? This isn't really the time to worry about others, is it, Greed? As soft as you've become, I wonder how much longer you can survive. <laughs> Shut up, you beast. What a horrific thing to say to your own brother, Greed. Honestly, I might have to eat you. I promise that I won't go down easy. He's got a taste for homunculi now. <laughs> oh, so you've chosen to show yourself. <laughs> Casually strolls hey, in. Hohenheim. The hero always waits until the last second to make his move. <laughs> okay. Hero? <laughs> Interesting. You must think you can defeat me. No, I'd never think that. I'm not dumb enough to try and fight you. He's playing to his pride. Are we gonna get another poetic death here? He must be plotting something. He's exploiting your, your biggest attribute. Was that Al's idea? That was very insightful. Here he comes. Are you joking? This was your pathetic plan? No. No, this is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. There's always layers. Nothing is ever what it seems. They got this. I have faith. It seems as though your son enjoys being held hostage. It's either that or he's supremely stupid. He sounds pretty proud. That's crossing a line, Pride. Don't ever mock my son. Damn. Hen's still in his pockets.
Now he's in total darkness, and Al's in there with him. That's amazing. He yeah. actually managed to confine pride. And he did it very casually. <laughs> You gotta you trust Al. No. In there with that He's got it. Do like that? Al's a great alchemist, even though we haven't seen that much of it. Idea. Al was the one who suggested this. <laughs> Damn, Al's stepping up. I love it. You fell for it. You can't use your powers in this dark. <laughs> I don't see why you're laughing. You're trapped inside this thing too. Let's have a little test of endurance, Salim. Oh, sorry. Oh. You called pride. You see, pride. My body doesn't need yeah. oxygen or light or yeah. food. Yeah, Al has a lot of practice. I hope he brought a book, although he couldn't read in the darkness. And it was only a matter of time before the fight spread to the slums. Look how big this thing Since is. we knew we couldn't defeat him, I acted as a decoy and we imprisoned him. Well, you could have at least told me what you were... Your brother told me not to. He said that you'd be against it, okay? And he was right. But you gotta believe in Al. It's I'll not all your responsibility. Because it was the only way to make sure everyone would survive. Try to understand. Now, let's get to work putting these fires out. Great bonding moment. <laughs> Not much of a reunion, huh? But this is all my fault, so I had to do something. And besides, I only have to stay in here for one day. I promise I'll be okay, brother. Yeah, Pride actually can't hurt him. It seems. I love that scene. Speaking of growing up, I feel like that was a really big moment for Al. In certain ways, the show, he's been in Ed's shadow. So it feels good for Al, who is like the humblest of all of them, to defeat Pride. Or like, contain Pride. I don't know what's actually gonna happen. I'll bet it would be a lot of fun to go back to that library scene now and see their first interaction. So lust is dead, envy's gone, gluttony's eaten. Yeah, it's crazy Brad to think about. Eastern Command, and they've got Pride under lockdown. <laughs> So that means Sloth and Pops are the only ones watching over Central. Hey, Greed! What the hell are you planning? <laughs> I've told you. I'm planning on ruling the entire world. Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Full Very dramatic. Metal oh, Alchemist. here we go. I have a bad feeling about Greed, though, because the homunculi are all dying in these poetic ways, and now Greed is heading into danger because of his greed. And so I have a bad feeling he's not going to survive this encounter. Which scares me not really so much for greed, but for Ling. And speaking of Ishvalans, you have to wonder whatever happened to that fellow with the X-shaped scar across his face. Is that him? Well, yeah. He always himself. appears when people talk Speak about him. The devil and he shall appear. Yeah, exactly. Did that little girl ever meet back up with you guys? You know, the one that always carried that cat around with her. She passed through here again just a few weeks back. She did what? Yeah, she's headed to Central, trying to be a hero. You boys out celebrating tonight? Why? What's to celebrate? You can drop the act. I know you were behind blowing up the drain Bradley was on. What was that? So you... you weren't behind it? It's news to us. Uh-huh. I just assumed you must have led the other Ishvalans to take your revenge on King Bradley. We're past that now. My brothers would never lower themselves to such cowardice. They're your allies, and this country will soon see them as heroes, not terrorists. Nice, that feels good. Good goal. I need to learn to draw the line somewhere when it comes to my job. I spent a fortune having this suit tailor-made, and now it's filthy. And the fun isn't even scheduled to start until the sun's up. He would be one to care about hygiene, wouldn't he? Is that pride trying to dig himself out? Yeah. I doubt my dad would have made the walls thin enough for a child to tunnel out. <laughs> you think you've got us all figured out, but you don't know a thing about us. Tell him, Al. You're too arrogant to see that things might not go your way. Pride arrogant? No. The whole thing hinged on us doing what you wanted. But what if we had simply decided to run away to a different country? That's all it would have taken and your entire plan falls apart. True. And there are some humans selfish enough who would have done exactly what you said. But then, not all. Just look at Raph's wife. There was a time when we took a trip to the city and I was almost run over by a car. Is this Pride having some love for his mother? I've always known what it was to have a father, but I have never had what you would call a mother. I was quite intrigued by her. Oh, this is bizarre. For me. When you say Raph's wife, you mean Mrs. Bradley, right? Yes, that is correct. This is a great talk. <laughs> Glad they're getting along so well. 
I won't deny that I was just playing house with her. But I also can't deny that my time spent with her has been pleasant. I quite liked it. So this is really interesting to me as someone who's been curious about to what extent the homunculi are capable of, like, more broad human traits. I mean, he's not exactly expressing love, but at least he's recognizing the virtues of humanity, which is really interesting. I mean, he did play his role really well, so, you know, he probably did enjoy it on some level. This is such a great idea because Al is sort of this ultimate good and Pride this ultimate evil, right? Or so it seemed until now. I just love the fact that Al is, like, having a sit-down talk with Pride. There's something so special about this. And one step up from them, we have you and your brother chosen to be sacrifices for the infinite strength of your spirits you never would have fled and abandoned this country in fact you even went so far as to bring the fight to us so is he trying to start a fire how were our plans so sloppy yeah as soon as al said that that was my thought as well it's like well you can say they have a cynical take on humanity but they definitely got what they wanted using your human nature. So they are effective at manipulating human behavior, and that means accounting for these kinds of things even if they still think humans are pathetic. We should start getting ready. Right. Feels like he came to the grave All to like right, get recharged. Let's move out. What was she looking for there? I wonder if this is the final time we'll visit Hugh's grave. It feels like for Roy it's a reminder, because he has a lot in front of him, and so I can imagine him needing that to do what he has to do. But way more importantly, in the whole will they won't they of Roy and Riza, <laughs> that felt like a missed opportunity there for Roy. Move out is not the most romantic thing he could have said. But yeah, I guess that's just where his head is. What happened here? It's been cleared to the ground. The whole area. A lot of tree casualties. And what caused that? That's not natural. Don't touch that. <laughs> Let me take a guess. Kimberly ordered you to track us down and kill us, now didn't he? Huh? You're joking, right? You can't really still think that we're working for Kimberly. We've all been converted by the different Elric brothers. I'm sorry to have to spring this on you right away, but we really need to get... <laughs> hey, Piggy, Gorilla, and Fatty! Shut up and stop fighting! You wanna mess with us, Shorty? So you really did quit. I guess we all ditched him around the same time then. Yeah, sounds like it. It was all too obvious that Kimberly considered us to be expendable. What gave it away? <laughs> I know for a fact that these guys would never abandon us. Your younger brother sure got some serious guts. Trapped in total darkness with that monster? I think that I'd lose my mind if I were in his place. Yeah. Al's doing everything possible to keep us safe. He is. The rest of it. Well, that's up to us. <laughs> Dramatic cloak wearing intensifies. I like that he has faith in Al like that. This is it. This is the, the sun sunrise on the promised day. The promised days. Yeah. Crazy. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> this is gonna be nuts. All the players are assembled. Such a long road here to this point. The best part of this episode for me, I think, was Al stepping up like that. That was a great feeling. And I love him working together with Hohenheim. It's so cool. It's so cool to think about like how far we've come in terms of our interpretations of Hohenheim. And I also feel like even though it's subtle, Ed is sort of coming around. Like he was distrustful at first when Hohenheim made that thing, but accepted it pretty quickly. And it feels like a little bit of a role reversal for Ed and Al because Ed is usually the one thinking that everything is his responsibility and like taking care of everyone. And he has to protect his brother from harm, even if it costs him his own life. But in this episode, Al sort of forced it so that Ed had to accept it, which he did. And also used it as motivation. Like Al's doing his part, Ed can do his. I also really like the Chimeras and their conversation. I feel like I shouldn't be surprised at this point by the fact that everybody wins me over, but they've come a long way for me. I like how it feels like they've now personally connected themselves to this whole thing. Even though it's a great risk to themselves, and they could have easily just stayed with Kimberly and stayed in the military, although that's risky too, you can see that it means a lot to them. So much so that they're willing to risk it all. My overall feeling for the characters at this point is just like love. Like I love them all. I love this whole crew, which is pretty amazing. I mean, I think this is like the biggest cast I've ever loved, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Except for Yoki. But there's still time. You never know. But that's the end of episode 49. I'll see you guys next time for The Promise Day. Whoops, I totally forgot about the episode ending. What time is it? You have to get up now and hurry up or you're gonna miss it. What am I missing? The Promise Day. Sleep. A solar eclipse. A yeah. solar eclipse? Oh, man. Hey, quick, come check this out. It looks like there's a building on fire. <sighs> Do not go outside the house today, all right? Yeah, good advice. Well... You should get out of the house.
and go away from the house and then go far away from a mistress. Just get out. Take the kids and run. SETI squad is currently engaged in combat with Mustang's group in the western sector. Oh, they caught up to him. The only one we need alive is Roy Mustang. The Fuhrer's wife is expendable. Damn. Eliminate Why are all these officers so slimy? Subordinates. So much for using her as a hostage tool. Damn, this is a crazy end credit sequence. This is way more involved than, like, Roy's behind the back note burning. That hostage thing is not gonna work. Are you going to shoot? Where's my boy Havoc? Havoc? The only one we need alive is Mustang. Kill the rest. <laughs> Madam Christmas? <laughs> No, that's it? I'm guessing that's how episode 50 will start. That was a crazy one. My prediction, someone came from behind and saved them. Roy's got eyes. It's either gonna be Havoc or Madam Christmas. I hope it's Madam Christmas. <laughs> it's been Madam Christmas all along, so maybe Black Hayate will get some action too. You know, the real movers and shakers of this world. Or maybe it was Brosh, that'd be cool too. We saw him running towards the action. All right, but that actually is the end of episode 49. So I'll see you guys next time for episode 50 where I'm pretty sure we're gonna pick up right where we left off.